right? Yeah. Good morning, it's Todd and Aaron. Morning stream. Get part daily. What there do you we, do with the toolkit? Um, no, so the power cord on my the power cord on my computer mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. failed. Yes. And so and now I'm just gonna use this kind of a mock-up. Because it makes me feel like I don't have something here. So this will be my new computer for today. So you've gone completely crazy now. <laughs> That's nice. You can't go anywhere if you're already there. Father to my children. Um, you know, I put Zoe to bed last night. He was a phytoplankton. Don't even ask. Don't even go into it. It, it just gets worse. She has a creature to put her to bed. No, don't even try to explain. Don't. I'm not going to explain. All right, so um, what we should do, first of all, uh, we should go see the... The Morning Mountain Cam, which is beautiful. It's the Robert J. DeBry Morning Mountain Cam. I would like to point out to you, this is a serene and pastoral moment for you that perhaps you are stressed. Perhaps you're feeling crazy. I would like you to look at the gentleness here and think, this uh, isn't such a bad world. Look. Oh. And soon it'll be on fire. Well, there's that. But is right it? now, it's perfect. All right. Hey, coming up, though, this is a pretty interesting day. Uh, number one, we've got your festival update. There's a whole bunch of different things starting this weekend and free and fun. Um, also, we're selling our house, and I had no idea that there was a whole new element that they've thrown into this in order to manipulate you, which I kind of actually appreciate. And plus, there's no time for sex. Oh. No time. Oh. It's not my fault. It's the story. Is it going to help? I hope so. But first, right. there's things breaking up, and you really dig this. Okay, so I think you're all familiar with, with the uh, Gephardt Daily Todd and Aaron Morning Stream drone. We've been very proud of our drone. We have a licensed pilot for the drone. And like all things, sometimes things can go south. Now look at right here. See, we're droning in, we're droning oh, in. Oh man, is this where everything went this horribly Bill, wrong? This is Bill in his garden. His unnatural love, and I know. And then the hit the fence thing. Ah, dude. Let's back that up. It's not as dramatic as the one where it fell off Delicate Arch, but it's still pretty tragic. All right, one more time. Hey, Bill, look over here. Whoa. So what happened? He clipped the top of a fence, right? And you know what you do with a oh, drone look, that's and there's broken. the corpse. You there's can see, the almost see the corpse of the drone. You almost see the tears. Now, right? Let's put that drone in a bucket and just cry over it. Oh, no. It was Not the drone. the drone. That's pretty sad. $70. New props. <sighs> ready to go. All well, right. at least we can crash it into something new this weekend. What? No, they don't let me fly it. No, this. Somebody, that last crash wasn't your fault. Somebody on Facebook said this was ridiculous, so I'm going to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, good morning, Thursa. Nice to see you. I think Thursa was one of our winners for Christopher's. Did you go last night? I think so. I'm dying to hear about it. All right, back to the sex. This is. <laughs> well, no, but this is. We've been married for 20 years, so there is a thing that couples get in where you have a life, and maybe you have kids, or maybe you have like extremely demanding work, or whatever else. But you know, traditionally, the two times that people the two times love, is that going to be it? Are are at evening when you're going to bed, or in uh, the morning or when you're waking up? Like these people hiding in the bushes. Pretty much, that's all they got. I'm I'm there for them. Okay, number one, it's exhaust. If you're exhausted at night, it's kind of like let's get this over with, which is like the least possible sexy way to approach something like this, what? right? Because we all know it's important. It's what bonds you. It makes you feel like you know you're in this together. You you know you got each other's back. I mean, it's it's important. But I they, don't even know you. What? I'm helping. So there is a known sexologist. As a matter of fact, they call her a solutions-focused sexologist. So it's a big long title. Do you go to school time. for that? I'm not sure, but it's a university. I think many people will be investigating if this is the case. But she says, number one, have sleep nights. She said, just just do one, have sleep nights where nobody feels guilty that you're not being perky or frisky. They're just like, we're gonna freaking sleep. We're gonna sleep. We're not even gonna fight it. It'll be okay. There's no judgment, right? Okay. So far, that's not helping. Number two, can you can you do this some other times of the day? Like maybe when you both get home from work, or maybe you can meet for a lunch hour if you both live close to home. Or are there other times that scientists work for call you? those nooners? There's nothing wrong with that, my friend. Okay. So uh, sexually on the weekends. Now this one's interesting to me, and she says the reason why you do this is number one, it takes the pressure off during the week. But she said number two. There's a certain level of forbidden that goes along with the whole weekend thing where somewhere along the line, you're going to get rebellious and you're going to break the midweek rule and go at it like crazy monkeys because you've been told you can't. 
And so there's that added element of satisfaction. So what are you, you're, I've I, broken the rules. So you're like aisle 16 at Home Depot? I don't... That's not my problem. Do whatever you have to. Um, they said sex, um, not before bed. Uh, they s said it's interesting because you're, you're so tired and, you know, you've got all of this stuff put together and you're done. But she said, here's an interesting thing. If you've put the kids to bed and the only thing really left to do is, like, brush your teeth, they're unconscious, and maybe you guys, this is when you both watch a little Jimmy Kimmel or something... Then, before you actually go to bed yourselves. Does that make sense? Before yeah. Before you even go into the bedtime ritual, it's like that one sliver of free time we have when we've knocked the kids unconscious. Yes. I mean, they've So we can get it over with. Well, no, it's different. Okay, or set your alarm earlier in the morning. That one's not going to work for That's us. That's not going to work. 4.30 is early enough. Yeah. I love you, but not that much. Yeah. So, but what she's saying is, is that one of these five could actually help you respark some of the some of the passion because either you have to disobey your own rules or you're being more creative about where you fit this in. But no matter what you do, you're you're still managing to to bond and and have that be part of your life again instead of being bitter and frustrated and unhappy about it. I don't think anything's been solved here, but maybe that's she's a she's a solutions based sexologist. You're a morning host. So would you go to the, the Phoenix College of Sexology? Once again, she is a solutions-focused sexologist, and you're just a morning guy. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> I trust her. All right, all right. She's all right. an expert. What's so, this about parking tickets? This is kind of cool little thing. You know, last week we talked about... Last week we talked about uh, we're seeing more boots. Cars getting booted. Oh, I know. And we were talking right? about that one guy who actually just took off his tire and went, there you go. Because they put the boot on wrong. And so, uh, which they still had his license and yeah, plates and they still yeah. hunted him down. But there is something really cool because this guy, uh, you know, you're in a situation where the guy left his car in a, in a lot that had meters in it, right? So it's a parking lot with meters. And he left it there, and he left a little note on it, and it said, please take pity on me. Now, we've watched the enforcement people. I've never gotten downtown. the sense they were prepared to take pity on I anything. I don't. I think ever. they, just the way they slapped the ticket, this one guy we yeah. used to watch, <laughs> slapped the ticket on the, on the, on the, the windshield, it's just like, yeah, take that. Mm -hmm. Well, this guy said, take pity on me. I walked home, safe choices. Oh, good one. So he had been drinking. And so he left it there. And the guy also responded, the the, lawn for the parking enforcement thing. Oh, and the guy did put a smiley face, which always helps. Oh. Yeah. And he said, uh, pity granted, just a warning. Oh, that's so nice. So how cool is that? That's triple bonus points. Good for him. So begging sometimes works. Well, apparently, if you've got a really good excuse, too, though, that's a good reason. Right. I mean, that's a really good reason. I would totally back that up. I want to talk about cars since we're talking about cars. And uh, basically, um, everyone can break break into anybody's car. Both that's of ours got broken way. into last weekend. We know this. It's just the way it works. And uh, <clears throat> to be, uh, some cars are easier. Some cars are harder. This guy in South Carolina um, uh, carjacked this lady. She was what? At the intersection, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, just grabbed her, opened the door, grabbed her, threw her out of the car, jumped in. What do you think happened next? Um, if it were me, I'd bite him savagely on the leg and he'd have to drag me along like a rabid raccoon, but I'm uh -huh. sure that she was smarter than I am. What do you think the bad guy did? Crashed? No. Tell me. He sat there. Why? Because he'd never seen a clutch before. <laughs> you never see a standing <laughs> transmission. <laughs> And it's hard to drive off in first and really make a compelling getaway squeal. Well, yeah, because, you know, the clutch, if you've never driven one, it's a, it'd be a mystery, wouldn't it? That's hysterical. And so I have some other safety things uh, to keep your car from being stolen. Number one, drive kind of a crappy car. It's been working for us for years. No one's going to steal a 93 Ranger. They're just not. Number two, leave the windows open. Never lock it. Because otherwise, what do they do? They break the windows. They break we, your windows. We had one car thief who was so lazy, he actually broke the next window in his car because he didn't want to bother to reach in and just pull up he the He broke lock. two windows. So yeah, just leave it unlocked, right? The standard transmission is good, but if you're going for that extra little bit, 
you park it facing uphill. Because oh. <laughs> working a clutch is hard enough for some people on a flat area. That's hysterical. But going uphill, impossible. Man, that's genius. Right? Like in the worst possible way. So he, just, you. he basically just sat there in the intersection. Like I'm. And the oh. cops pulled up and he was getting out of the car and they went, him, and they went and got him. And that was over. And she's like, please don't slam him on the hood of my car when you're handcuffed. Oh, there's another gun. Okay. Yeah. I've seen that before, too. All right, we got All right. information. Yeah, we've got Daisy. She's in the Gephardt Daily Newsroom. And she is brought to you by Robert J. DeBry. He has offices in St. George, Sandy, and Salt Lake City. If you need help, you just go to robertdebry.com. Also, by Executive Transportation, our friend March took out one of our winners last night, as a matter of fact, to Christopher's. And he's got a beautiful fleet of expensive and gorgeous cars. Just go to executiveutah.com to book one of them. And all Utah plumbing, all you have to do is give them a call of hysteria and screaming anytime there's a 24-hour emergency because that's what they're there for. It's all Utah plumbing, heating, and air. Daisy, what's going on today? Hello, everyone. Here's what's making headlines on GebhardtDaily.com. A 32-year-old woman is paralyzed and in critical condition after being shot during a robbery at a Salt Lake City sandwich shop Tuesday. The shooting took place about 6 p.m. at the Quiznos at 1775 South, 4130 West. Two suspects are being sought by police, one of whom may have been shot during the attempted robbery. Police have yet to, relate, uh, to release the shooting victim's name. The investigation is ongoing. An early morning apartment fire in Ogden displaced 11 people and caused an estimated $200,000 in damage Tuesday morning. Crews were called to 1429 East Canyon Cove at 3.33 a.m. When they arrived, they found the complex engulfed in flames. Tenants inside all 24 apartments made it out safely. The cause of the fire has yet to be determined. And firefighters in southern Utah are bracing for another day battling the Bryan Head wildfire. The human sparked blaze grew to 1,800 acres overnight, and today's extreme high temperatures could pose problems as the fire closes in on a nearby Boy Scout camp. 400 firefighters and support personnel are now involved in the fray. So far, one cabin has been destroyed and at least three others damaged. And now a look at your Wasatch Front weather, where we set a record yesterday with a high of 101 degrees. Hasn't been that warm on this day since 1936. We can expect more of the same today with a high around 100 and just a wee bit cooler as we head into the weekend. That's it for now. Stick around with news from Tinseltown overnight. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Daisy. As you can see, Steve, our photographer, who has turned into the mother hen that nourishes us every morning, has come in with not two, but three breakfasts, even with jelly for the, the, I mean, seriously, who gets this anywhere at work? Anywhere. I come in now and he's like flipping pancakes, like, how you doing? What's going on? Yeah, hey, yeah. I'm going to go get, take some more award-winning photos, but first, would you like your bacon crispy? Who gets Holy that mackerel. Out? This is the best job ever. This is like ever. a dream come true. Best job ever. All righty. <laughs> um, so... Uh, all Utah Plumbing, you were yeah, we're talk about, about this. him. We're going to talk to John later. They are just working their keisters off right now, trying to take care of everyone, and they're doing a great job. If you're air conditioning, oh, it's 100. Oh, today it's 100, too. Uh, you, you need someone? We're going to show you how you can get this, like, in the, like, next day, help for your family. They do everything. You know what? The good thing is they're incredibly honest, and they only fix one, one thing, and they do it right the first time. They don't have to come back. So they have that guarantee. It's all Utah plumbing, heating and air and uh, sprinklers. And and uh, really the air is the most important. We're gonna show you how I can get a hold of them today to get that done. Um, Are you ready for tell me something good? Only if it's really good. This is a really good one. I'm okay. gonna eat eggs while you do this. You know, we've been talking a lot about the heat recently. As a matter of fact, that things were so bad down in Arizona that they actually closed Sky Harbor Airport. There's a differing of opinion on why, but they actually closed it for a few Planes can't fly in hot hours. weather. No well, lift. Here's the deal. Think about this. I mean, we've got the hot weather warnings where we're at 100. Down in St. George, they're at 112. That's epic. Well, right now in Phoenix, Arizona, it's 121 degrees. Now, you and I know that walking out barefoot in something like that is basically just like How putting you yourself on a grill. How would you do that? Well, listen to this. David Witherspoon was leaving his volunteer shift at a food pantry in Phoenix when he saw a man literally crawling across the road on all fours. Now take a look at this picture. This has actually made me tear up. 
Look at this oh, man. No. So he stopped his car and went over to the man and said, what's wrong? And he said, I've become homeless. He said, I was staying with somebody, and I, but they just threw me out today. And they threw me out without my shoes, my clothes, my backpack, anything that I have. So, I mean, the, it was unbelievably, unimaginably hot. And he's trying to get to somewhere with any kind of a green space. He literally had to start crawl crawling because... Keep his feet off. Yeah, and he put his socks on his hands so that he could crawl. So David Witherspoon, who is the sweetest guy in the world, said, let me, let me help you. He, he grabbed a spare pair of shoes out of his car and a water bottle. He washed and dried the man's feet before slipping on his footwear, just like the biblical right. thing. And he right. says, he, he says, the reason why I could do this, he says, is I keep multiple pairs of shoes in my car so I can switch them out between my work because I work at the Phoenix Veteran Affairs and then also at the food pantries. And the thing that's amazing about this, he goes, I'm a little surprised, he said, because I'm a size 14. He says, I have ridiculously Huge. gigantic feet. And he said, the shoes fit him perfectly. Would you, will, would you really be willing to literally give, like, practically the shoes off your feet to somebody? I think everyone would. But, but he I, was there at the right time. And they fit perfectly. It was right. like Cinderella, except for a lot hotter. And that's like NBA player size yeah, feet. Yeah, that's like a boat, like, isn't I it? I have 11s, and that's, like, longer... Anyway. You got some big feet. I got some big feet. I just thought that was a gorgeous story, and especially <clears throat> because everything's been so ridiculously hot. It just how is our how is our big thank you going? Um, the big thank you was awesome. I just was talking about Thursday today. Um, she said she had a great time. She loved March. She was such a great driver. Karen says I want to win. I have to have, go have a mammogram. That's much more important. And you're still entered to win, Karen. That's fine. Um, and. Uh, Basically, March picks you up in one of his sweet Escalades and takes you down to Christopher's I, Prime Steakhouse. Can I go back to something? Yes, dear. Karen says she needs a mammogram. And does she plan to have March drive there first and then do that and then go to dinner? No, she's saying she didn't have time to enter this morning because she had to go get the mammogram. And I said, just like share or comment today oh. and you're entered. It's very, very easy. Oh, good for so, you for going, by Just the way, one of Karen. our three Facebook pages is all you need. You can go to the Todd and Aaron Facebook page, Get Part Approved, Get Part Daily. Comment on the show today, like the page, share, and you're entered. It's embarrassingly simple because we're not that bright, and you if know, we made it complicated, we couldn't keep track of that. Yeah. So, yeah, this is horrible, actually. I have all That's this horrible. food in front of me, and I have no time to eat it. I know, isn't that cruel? Well, on the bright side. Why don't though, you just talk for a while? Well, you know what? <laughs> Here's the nice thing. In just a few minutes, we're going to be doing the festival update for the weekend as well as free and fun with Daisy and then mm -hmm. all the Hollywood headlines. You can eat then. All right. All right. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about, I amazed my wife last night. With it my, was eerie. With my psychic ability. It was eerie. This happened a couple of years back, and Erin was in the living room, and she was going through the TV trying to find something, and she said, oh, I found a movie, and I said, Mystery Men? Random? We had talked about it. What was she looking for? What did she find? How did you even know that? Strange and wonderful ways. And then last night... I was on the phone with my mom, and I was walking the, uh, Zachy and Zoe down to the fairy garden, which is at my friend Laurie's house, and she ships it, she switches it out all the time, and all the kids come to look at it. And But I was deep in conversation with my mom, and I'm trying to keep the kids from running into the street. And this young man looks at me like, oh, Hi, Aaron. And he comes over and hugs me, and I'm like... I know this person, I know this person. And usually, my memory sucks at names, but if I can hear a bit of their story, I remember. So like, Aaron, oh, it's Steve. So Aaron comes back. But and I she, felt horrible, because he said, we live here now, come by and see us, we live here. And I'm like. And I said, you mean Will? I haven't seen this boy for, what, three years? Yeah. I didn't know, I re re remembered his name. That was the eeriest thing I've ever witnessed. You, you stopped, your jaw dro dropped. Mm -hmm. That was pretty amazing. Yeah. All right, coming up next, we have the hot car intervention. Sometimes it takes a kid to be absolutely brilliant. And it is brilliant. And this will blow you away. Coming up next. We're brought to you this morning by Executive Transportation. Elegant service, professional style. Go to executiveutah.com. And All Utah Plumbing. Your home deserves the best. 24-hour emergency service at allutahplumbing.com. And also by Columbus Travel. If you go to columbusvacations.com, you can sign up for a weekly newsletter that always has great last-minute deals on hotels, airfare, cruises, and more. Did you know you can catch the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream any time of the day or night on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud, and GetParDaily.com? It's the Morning Mountain Stream. That's the when you that's the ones you shot last weekend we were in the Uintas, right? Right, right. That's so cool. Isn't that pretty? 
Uh, I think that's a really good reminder that everything is like 10 to 15 degrees cooler up there. It's so, so that's pretty. a really good reason. Every right? time we go camping, we, we, we always sit there and get to the fire and say, why, why don't we do this more often? And then we come home and we smell like, you know, the hill people and all of our neighbors ask us to go hose off. Just right in the front yard, get it over with. It's you know? just... It's just so fun. Okay. And, and at night, the stars are just unbelievable. Now, we were talking about this yesterday because I did the hot car challenge where I right. basically, like an idiot, spent 45 minutes in one of our sealed cars on a 100-degree day. And I think where did it, get to? it hit to 118, I think, within th seven minutes. <coughs> And she I, wasn't right for like two days. It was there was a certain level of brain damage, but I <clears> thought it was important because that we'd lost so many kids that year. Right. So it's been on my mind a lot over the last couple of days, just looking at that footage again and just remembering that feeling. But you told me this, this is a kid who came up with this. Yeah, this is kind of interesting. Uh, the kid uh, is named Bishop, and uh, he was really uh, he's ten years old, and uh, basically he was uh, he just he was so effective when he heard the news that uh, someone in this town had passed away because of that being in a, in a car. So he started putting his brain together. Now, what he came up with was a, <clears throat> a device that would save kids, let people know if there was a, the car was still and there was a person still in the car. Because that's usually the tragedy. It's, 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 sometimes they're just dumb and they go, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll run in for a minute. And I'll <coughs> but a lot of times they just genuinely forget, like if there's a child sometimes. sleeping in a car seat, you can forget. So dad went on and uh, did the GoFundMe, and he got $20,000 for development. Now, how old is this kid? 12. He's 10? He's 10, yeah, right. So anyway, years old. He, what he did is he made this little, and it's a little box, and it goes onto your car seat, and it notifies, it's got an antenna app on your phone, hello, someone's in trouble. The temperature is this. That's and, freaking genius. Yeah, yeah. And it also has a built-in cooling device. You've got to be kidding me. No. And so his dad, Bishop, this is Bishop again. Bishop, I love Bishop's this Bishop's dad works. I love him so much. Works for Toyota, and he brought it up to him, and he took it up to the research and development people. And guess what they did? They flew him to Japan, to the center of Toyota, and the research and development. And so that's where he went, and that's what they're working on. That's incredible. Isn't it? I just... I love the concept that not only is there notification, though, that, but there's actually something there that can keep the little one alive until they can get back. Just if it gives you a couple more minutes, you yeah, know? Yeah, that's, sometimes that's what you need. And I mean, so, that's incredible. And so they're, they're looking at this and seriously thinking about maybe this is something they can put into the vehicle full time. So if that does happen, the car would actually turn on, air turn on. I think that's incredible. Unlock that makes doors. Me cry. Yeah. So anyway. Okay. Ten years old. Ten years old. I was I was eating dirt when I was ten. All right. You know, we've been thinking a lot about splash pads. Number one, because of the heat and you know misery. But uh, I like splash pads because it's not like the full commitment. You're not getting in. You know, having a shower and putting on your swimsuit. And you don't have to pool. tread. You don't have to tread water. You, know, you don't have to swim in other people's sunscreen and, and perspiration. I love that. So oh. we have a complete list of all the splash pads along the Wasatch Front. If you want to go to GetPartDaily.com, uh, just go to the Todd and Aaron page. So it's right there. It's but 100 Richard degrees today. Went out with his camera. Yeah. And he was cool. Watch. I think it's very hot for Salt Lake City. Unusual. The sidewalk's burning. Ah, uh, seriously hot. <laughs> it's probably about 95 to 98 right now. For the end of June, probably a little warmer than normal. Yeah, pretty much the only thing to do on a day like today is get in some cold water. Brought my boys out just to get them out the house instead of them being in the house all day. I kind of hesitated a little bit bringing them out just because I know when it's this hot sometimes they get really sluggish and it's hard to tell you have to just keep giving them water but um, while they're playing out in the water they seem to be fine as long as their body temperature is cool I'm okay with bringing them outside the little one is in SPF 50 sun um, oh my gosh what is it swimsuits and same with the older one and we've all been sun blocked up I've got a timer on my Fitbit in 80 minutes I know I need to apply more sunscreen on the kids umbrella hat sunscreen Lots of water. Just keep an eye on them, keep them cool, uh, make sure they get a lot of water, you know, keep vitamin C in them, and make sure you got uh, whatever sunscreen you need to put on the kids. When you get hot, they're hot, so you just got to keep reminding yourself that you need to give them plenty of liquids and plenty of sunscreen, and they should be okay. 
Okay, yeah, that right. would be great. All right, so anyway, so, hey, did Richard get to go in the water? Because he had equipment with him. Or was he just being tortured? <laughs> I think he was just being tortured. <laughs> Sounds familiar when we were doing the sprinklers. Hey, John, how How's are you? How's it going today? Very good. I didn't have my Speedos with me, so I couldn't go in. No Speedos. Oh, okay. oh, looks like you're smuggling grapes into the country. Okay, so first of all, John from All Utah Plumbing, welcome back. We're going to talk about AC because we have to. Yeah, it's it's hotter than a pistol. Right. That's for dang sure. And uh, one spot in my yard is uh, is uh, dried up and is brown, and I realized that the, the head was bad on it, actually snapped off. I see you well, brought how'd some... you do that again? I, I'm going to blame it on the kids yeah. and, and the dog. Well, I, have a, I brought in two simple tools that a homeowner should have. Just, just to help them do the simple repair on, say, a sprinkler head, the tire of a mower hits it or right, something like right. that. Right, right. I know what that is. So, yeah, what is it? Nipple extractor. That's right. Guys designed these I'm, words, didn't I'm they? I'm going to show anyway. it really close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, show it close. Okay. There's the nipple extractor. Now, explain how it works. Okay, so if it's a plastic little nipple that's in the pipe, right. you push it in there really hard, and then usually it'll take that out. Lefty Lucy. Righty like daddy. that, pop it out, and then you're there, ready to go. There we go. All right, and these and cost so, like three bucks. Yeah, they're like nothing. And so you go and do that, and then that'll help you just screw on a new head. Of course, we have the examples with the other videos of how we like to put them in with the funny pipe. And yeah, yeah. Now this, say you got a broken PVC pipe. I never seen in one of the these. ground. This thing is cool. So it's you'll probably hold that up there. I'm gonna too. hold it up. So it's a rope saw. Whoa! So what that thing does is you got really close quarters, you're in a, under a bush or whatever, and you're digging, you know, and you don't have a lot of room to get these saw in there or a cutter. Right. Well that thing you put it around and you go back and forth, back and, and you forth. And you cut it right out. And it'll cut the pipe in half. It's lovely. That's PVC cool. of course and it's not gonna work on Galby. It's not gonna work. Right? Anyway, so, so that, there's it's that. pretty cool. Every so, homeowner get it. How many people did you see yesterday for AC? Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was there was plenty. Constant, so, constant, so yeah. constant. And, but we're still doing good. We can book, you know, same day, next day service wow. usually. Uh, if it's next day, we put you on, not just get you on the board and then call you all day long and tell you that we're not coming. And you'll be we there in October. That. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, when you don't need it. Right. Perfect. So, so yeah. 100 today. We've got 100 today uh, slowing down into the mid-90s the rest of the week. So if it's not working, what's the most common thing? Most common thing is is dirty. Well, we've talked about rinsing it off, keeping it clean. Your filter, we're getting where it's frozen up. They're right. like, it's frozen up. I'm not getting any air, and I see frost on it. That's usually airflow, guys. Air circulation. And so clean, clean. It's not a bad idea. Change the filter today. It might have been a month. It isn't right. going to hurt. They're cheap. Now, if it is something bigger, you get to go and uh, do. you can do switch outs. You can check their, their core. I learned words from him. <laughs> uh, you can do all these different stuff and upgrade your system or whatever yeah. if it's not cutting the mustard. Yeah, whatever it needs. And then at the same time, you know. We're here for your plumbing as well. That as, as weird as it is, the HVC plumbing, they just kind of work together. If we're, like, mellowed out, it's slow. <laughs> it's, like, slow on everything. Well, How does that work? But anyway. So, so the thing is, this is what I want to do. Um, because um, we do this show live. It's live right now. Uh, and a lot of people watch it later. You right. know, a lot of people. And so what we thought is we should put up your number right now. And for those people who are watching right now, uh, just go ahead and call 801-652-4755. Now, if you're going to watch this later on demand, all you have to do is get to that, this part of the show and pause it. Get that number. Give him a, give him a call now if you want, and we're, he'll set you up. Do you have one spot open for today? Oh, more, more really? than that. We can make it work. Because as be... soon as I leave here, right. I get in the truck, your, your truck's and out I'm front. on my way to a job. Oh, I mean, so that's hilarious. how it works. Just go, 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 go. I this put the phone the number. Put the phone number back up. Put the phone number back up. It's <laughs> be hilarious. If, you get, if you're outside and you get a call, I want to know about it. 801-652-4755. John, uh, John, thanks for being here. Thank you. All right. Have I'll a good see one. you soon and enjoy fixing right. your sprinkler today. You got a question? Call me. All right. All right. All Very right, good. bud. All right. Thanks, see ya. Okay. Bye bye. All right. We're gonna so. 
Merit Medical. Why work for fast food wages when you can start at Merit for a whole lot more? Merit Medical. Great products, great people, a great company. Learn more at merit.com forward slash careers. The Law Offices of Robert J. DeBry and Associates with offices in Salt Lake City, Sandy City, and St. George. Check them out at robertdebry.com. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is actually available anytime at gepharddaily.com. Just click on the Todd and Aaron page. All right, so we are back. This is still murder. Do we uh, and John have a nice time? Yeah, but we're all hungry, and now it I know. Oh, and Steve is pure evil because he goes, oh, yeah, I just put a little Monterey Jack cheese in your, in your omelet to make it a little bit more flavorful, and I'm like, I can't eat it yet. United Airlines is, is uh, keeping up the good spirit. Tell me more. Uh, first of all. Because they've had some really awkward public relations issues today. Yeah, but it seems to be getting times. better. We apologize to our customers for the inconvenience. Um, this lady was flying, flying to Belize from uh, California. Oh, sounds like a party time. And this is a really smart idea in, in a respectful way. Um, on the concourse there in the uh, lounge of uh, United Airlines, there was a chapel. And she wasn't feeling great. So she went in very quietly. She laid down. Right. I see people sleeping at the airport all the time. Right. Yeah. And so um, one of the United and, and uh, the... Uh, decided that uh, uh, she shouldn't do that, so they kick her in the head. Are you lying? The United employee kicked her, woke her up by kicking her in the head? Yeah, and she was just like, what, what, are, you, what are you doing? And she, Lindsay said, I immediately got up and asked the person, why did you do that? Right. So she did take a picture of... His response was, I didn't, he didn't want me to miss my flight. You kicked me in the head because you didn't want me to miss my flight? Right. So when she got back into her wheelchair. What? No, you're lying to me. Nope. You're lying. Nope. The United employee kicked uh, a disabled woman who was sleeping in a chapel in the head. That's what it says. And his excuse was, I didn't, didn't want, want you, you to be late for your flight. flight. Right. Um... That would have been a really good people who are going to hell story. It really would have, I mean, after, right? Right? Jaws. <coughs> I still remember sitting in that theater and being paralyzed. Now, it came out today, 19, in 1975. Now, let me just say this. Uh, uh, all the pictures are copywritten, so we can't use them. All the music is copywritten, so yeah. we can't use John it. Williams. But I have my whiteboard here. Oh, good. Okay, see, there's one little picture. I still remember being incredibly traumatized Excuse by me. this. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Sure, go ahead. All right, so basically, do you remember the name of the town? Uh, Amity? Amityville or something? Yes. Yeah, so oh, no, Amityville. no, no, that's Amityville. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was, all I know is that it was off Cape Cod, right? Right. It was off Nantucket. And uh, it seriously scared people. I mean, seriously, people who were not going to go. Not gonna go. There's an upside down shot. Scared me. I was way too young to be watching it. I think my brother made me go with him so I could hold his hand. And I was, but. So anyway, um, we so all know. A, there's a fish. We all know. That looks more like a whale, like maybe a humpback. Teeth. Okay. Um, okay. There you go. Okay, that's right. good. And Doesn't he need a, a dorsal fin? Not this one. He's it's different. And this is the. Great boat. whites traditionally have a dorsal fin. Okay. So what you see here is, what you see here, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. what you see here is, uh, this is the scene where he says, we're going to need a bigger boat. Did you know that was ad lib, by the way? Yeah, right? Was it really? Yeah. They had so much trouble with the shark. How so? They, they had like three animatronic sharks, right? Oh, it was horrible. They that thought was the, a really good rendition, by the way. Thanks. I felt like I was on the boat. Were you on the boat? I felt like it. They had so much trouble with the, with the, with the deal, um, with the shark. It was just stupid. And it wouldn't fly, it wouldn't swim. They couldn't drag it behind the boats like they wanted to. So they were constantly fixing it. And to this day, people, it did make tubas famous, by the way. Like you're ever going to forget that. And, uh, and it's, it's so ingrained in our heads that Aaron and I were in Miami at a, at a, a radio conference. And it's midnight, and we're on the beach. We thought, We'll take a swim. So we went out, and we got up to about here, and we're embracing. We're looking up at the moon, reflecting on the water. We are we are in love and stuff, 
And we're so, uh, sitting there, and we go into this little cuddle thing, and it's really nice. Which one of us did it? And Stinkerhead here. It was me. I think it was you. No, we're just like, it's perfect. You hear the thing. The, everything's quiet. She just goes, dun 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 That's what we like to call a mood breaker. We <laughs> I sat there, and I was like, it's okay. It's just pretend. Three seconds later... I was out of the water, and she was laughing her butt off. You know that budget was only $12 million? I know. And that's the one that put Steven Spielberg on the map. He'd What's done the a few records before that. But. The record? It was the largest box office at the time or something? Um, it was the highest grossing film in movie history until it was bested by Star Wars in 1977. So three Oscars, um, which is pretty impressive. Three sequels, although I don't think anyone wants to assume that... Jaws 3 3D was really in the category. They all were category. stupid. It chased him to like Phoenix, Arizona, <laughs> you know? And he was in like a drainage canal. <laughs> like, oh no, it's Sharky. No. It, <laughs> it was the stupidest movie ever. All right, you're going to have to get out of here because I need Daisy. Okay, then I'm taking my bacon. Take your, ba take your food with you. I'm completely understanding all that. Right. But, oh, that was... <laughs> Okay, we, we've got the festival update, because this is the nice thing about summer. There's so many different things going on. And so this is your chance to kind of catch up and start making your plans for the weekend. Thank you. Hello, my cabbage. How many breakfasts do you have? I know, I know right? right? And they're killing me. It's like Steve is pure evil. Look at this. You can only share after. We don't, we don't just get one breakfast each now. We get like... Here's your 7 a.m. breakfast and your 8 a.m. Well, it's like the Hobbits. Remember, they always had the, the two breakfasts. I can't remember oh, what they, they called it. Oh, did they have two breakfasts? It was like the after breakfast. And yeah. <laughs> it's, time, it's time for second breakfast. Yeah, so maybe we just got that Hobbit thing There's going. There's no time for work. We just have to eat all the breakfasts all day, right? Why do you, it? Say, do you say that like it's bad? Do you say that like that's a problem? <laughs> you British. Don't you know how to binge like the rest of us? I'm going to have two rich tea biscuits instead of one to dip in my tea today. That's a party for us. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. I thought the hobbits were British. It seems like they... <laughs> they always have that accent. They, They're Middle Earth, but they no, always had the British accent. Here's, so here's the funny thing about, about hobbits and everyone from Middle Earth, basically. I mean, I think that the accents are just non-American because some of them are like... Australia, New Zealand, like, yeah. yeah. Maori. Middle Earth is a, is a huge melee of non-American accents. So it's basically everyone at but us is, is what you're saying. Well, is there an American hobbit? I don't think so. All of a sudden, there's like this like huge like Texas accent. I know. I <laughs> y'all done. Give us second breakfast. Yeah, yeah, that's not gonna work out. Never mind. All right, couple of freeze and funds for today. At the Sugar House Farmers Market opens today at the Fairmont Park. Um, that's five. That's like five p.m. till dusk. And then also the Happy Valley Farmers Market that is down in American Fork at the Robinson Park. Once again, five p.m. till dusk. So that's kind of cool. So many farmers markets. Yeah. Now, now, can you? We're gonna have a complete guide of all the farmers markets. Up on the Todd Naren page on getpartdaily.com so you can check it. Do you do you like to knit? Do you know how to knit? I know I need to learn too. I was taught as a youngster and I can't remember. You can tell by my face whether I know how to knit. Well, they have a thing tonight. I wish I did. This sounds so cool. They call it Lit Knit. It's 6 p.m. at the Weller Bookstore down in uh, Trolley Square in uh -huh, Salt Lake City. Uh -huh. And basically you sit there and knit and you all talk about your favorite books oh. and stuff you like. And they've got a woman who's an amazing writer and a bookseller and she knits and she tells you stories and Tell me that wouldn't be cool. So could I sit there and eat and, and talk about books? It's almost the same. Because I can't knit, but I would have to have something to we do. We could do the like, string licorice and sort of make it look like we were knitting with oh it or yeah. something. And then just... Oh, no, 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 but that sounds amazing. I know, right? Okay, festivals for this weekend. Taylorsville Days, and you know it's epic because it's got oh, two Z's. Oh, yes. Days. Taylorsville Days, and that is at the Swenson Valley Regional Park. Uh, that's starting today, and then it runs through Saturday. <gasps> the Utah Arts Festival. Oh, my god! You like this one, too, right? Yep. And this starts tomorrow, and that runs through Sunday, Library oh. Square downtown. Oh. I think they've been setting it for, what, a week and a half? Oh, yeah. It seems like just that area you can't even drive through during, like, this time of year because you've got, you know, Pride and then Arts Festival. There's, there's so many festivals down there. But I've managed to figure out the night that I really want to go. Tell me. Um, Friday night. Um, I'm so excited. I was I was just looking at what the lineup is. And, and Friday night, there's two things that I desperately want to see. Okay. Um, so there's a, there's a 
a, a, a ballet dancer in Salt Lake called Christopher Rude, who dances with Ballet West. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he has his own company now called Rude Dances. And they are performing um, Friday at 5.45 p.m. on the festival stage. Oh, nice. And so it, it's mostly Ballet West dancers, but they are, I mean, they're, they're jaw-dropping. So, oh, wow. so I'm going to start with that on the Friday night. And okay. then at 9.45 Friday, also on the festival stage, have you ever seen Samba Fogo? <gasps> yes, I love them. I can't dance. I dance like a white samba. girl. I cannot samba, but I love to watch it. Oh they're my amazing. Gosh. And they're even, so it's Afro-Brazilian and they're even doing fire dancing. <sighs> So my, my plan is like, I'm going to go and I'm going to watch and it'll be right then. It'll just be getting dark. And, oh, that's amazing. Oh my gosh. So a whole night of dance. You can, because it's the arts festival, oh, it's you can dance along. And They have, you know, one thing that's kind of like a sneaky inside tip and I discovered this last year, so I'm a moron that I didn't know before, but the Leonardo, because I know there's VIP sections in the arts festival and those are great, but the Leonardo actually has their own place where they have family they have like family areas where you can chill out and relax, mm -hmm. the family lounge. And then they have the wine lounge, which is the one that caught my interest, but I'll be with my family, so I guess I'm going to the other way. Yeah. But then I can take Zoe up to see the woman to woman exhibition. Yes. At the yeah. Leonardo. Explain this because it's really beautiful. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's it's uh it's I think it's woman woman. Plural, singular. I knew I'd say um, it wrong. I'm sorry, but I'm not sure which way which way around it is, and um, and it's uh, it's it's just I mean a very empowering exhibition about you know about women and there's and my mum as we know right now is is working on the women's mural work in progress and there's a version of that in there and it's just um, you know it, it's it, it will be a really cool thing to you know if you're at the arts festival swing in and take your family to there and then the other great thing about the leonardo during the arts festival is it it can get so hot and it's you know, so cool it's, and it's, delightful it's nice just to do the arts festival go into the leo cool off and now that they've know, set up the lounges and they have a new i mean a new chef the food is amazing i, I don't know it's just a really nice idea mm -hmm, and it mm -hmm. just seemed it, last year i did this and i'm like i am such an idiot why did i not think of this it's sooner right there because you're like yeah. this you know melting protoplasm and you're like they have air conditioning they're right there and yeah they're wonderful. and i love that about the arts festival actually that you've got all the specific activities but then mm -hmm. also you know you've got the you've got the leo and you've got the library and 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 don't forget the other area that I totally love. You've been to the Urban Arts mm -hmm. um, area, Urban right? Arts Lounge, That's yeah. always so fun. I, I usually will drop by there, like, towards the end of a night. Because they, you know, they have DJs. They have big um, graffiti walls that people can paint It's, like, on. edgy or... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I absolutely really, love that. it, That's a really fun area if you just want to kind of go down and, again, have a little dance and... You know, have some I'll watch you dance, but I'll be there with you in spirit I'm a, as, I'm as a you great dance. dancer. I'm very expressive. <laughs> Thank God Next year, I'll this. probably be on stage. Too. <laughs> I do believe that about you. Okay, festival update is done. We love you so much. But let's go into entertainment news. This brought to you by Robert J. Debray. Robert J. Debray with offices in St. George, Salt Lake City, and Sandy. Go to robertdebray.com for help. Executive transportation, all you need for a quick ride to the airport or a wonderful night out. It's executiveutah.com to book. And then Black Diamond Electric. Black Diamond Electric has 24-7 service, and if there's anything you need between electric, plumbing, heating, and air, they would be your people to help you. So, Daisy, what is going on? Yeah, here's a look at your Tinseltown headlines for today. Three-time Oscar winner Daniel Day-Lewis is retiring from acting. His publicist released a statement on Tuesday. Daniel Day-Lewis will no longer be wor working as an actor, the statement said. He is immensely grateful to all of his collaborators and audiences over the many years. This is a private decision, and neither he nor his representatives will make any further comment on this subject. 60-year-old Day-Lewis won his Oscars for his his work in the films Lincoln, There Will Be Blood, and My Left Foot. Production of the fourth series of ABC's Bachelor in Paradise will resume in Mexico after an internal investigation found no evidence of misconduct by members of the reality show cast. A producer had filed a complaint over an alleged sexual encounter between two contestants who had been drinking in a pool, Corin Olympios and Demario Jackson. Because alcohol was involved, it wasn't clear whether either of them was too intoxicated to give consent. An outside law firm, firm reviewed the video and found no misconduct. Conduct. The show is scheduled to air this summer on ABC. Actress Jamie Lynn Spears is sharing an Instagram, for, an Instagram 
photo of her daughter Maddie celebrating her, her birthday with the first responders who saved her life after her ATV accident four months ago. That's incredible. I know, right? My baby is nine years old today, and more than ever, we realize how precious every day is. Spears wrote under the photo, which showed Maddie flanked by first responders identified as John and Victoria. Thank God for these amazing people, and thank you, God, for your amazing grace, Spears wrote. We are so blessed today and every day with this little angel. And she it, looks exactly like a Spears, doesn't yeah, she? Yeah, she looks just she? like Brady as a little kid. And, she uses the Disney stuff. And and I guess, uh, you know, this was all over the papers, but Maddie nearly drowned and remained unconscious for two days after she accidentally drove an ATV into a pond. Um, and she's she's made a full recovery. I can't even imagine how terrifying that would be as the parent, oh just sitting gosh. and waiting Can for your you child imagine? to wake up. imagine? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so those, wow. are the, those are the Tinseltown headlines overnight. My sister is going to be crying all day because Daniel Day-Lewis is her um, favorite, favorite actor. I didn't want to interrupt the, the entertainment news, but I have to ask in the nicest possible way, is he still, I didn't know he was still working. What's I have to last, be honest, what's the last I haven't thing seen did? him in... I, let's look up IMDb real fast. I don't want to be rude, but I'm just, I'm, I understand his retirement. That's awesome. But I was like, What's, when, are you already yeah, done? Because uh -huh. we haven't seen you in anything. So we were just a little curious if you may, let's find out. Daniel. And he's known, isn't he? I wonder if he's just exhausted. He's super Because he's cranky. known for like, you know, being highly immersive and kind of, um, you know, getting if if he, if he's making a film, he will be that character throughout the film. Remember Last of the Mohicans? He's running around. He's got that, you know, that muslin shirt, and mm -hmm. his hair is all long. And he looks at Madeline Stowe, and he goes, "I will find you." That's and you're like, my yeah. Oh my that, gosh, that's, I know you. Will. Yeah, that was my sister. Like, if she could, if she could have a, a you know, a, a kind of dream, be in a movie, it would be in that movie, yeah. in that scene where he's. That was pretty good. Uh, Lincoln was in 2012, and I guess... Oh, Lincoln. That's right. So that was five years so ago. So did he win for that? Um, and I guess he's got yes, Phantom he Thread that's in post-production here in 2017. So he has done one movie in the last five years. So I guess that's technically now he's retiring. My advice for him would, would be to maybe not give up acting, but do some nice blockbusters, like maybe appear in, a, in one of the Transformers or even Fast and the Furious. Like go in a different direction, Daniel. Have some fun. Yeah, really. Just screw with everybody. You just show up in one of the Lamborghinis and go, hi, yeah, yeah, how are yeah, you? Yeah, then yeah, drive yeah. off. You've done your time. Everybody's yeah, happy, yeah. right? See, you can solve everything. Everything. It's true. All right. <laughs> Coming up next, it's guacamole and toxic people and, and not really together. We'll explain. Todd and Aaron's Morning Stream brought to you by Black Diamond Experts. Electric, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. You'll be glad you called an expert. The Law Offices of Robert J. DeBry and Associates with offices in Salt Lake City, Sandy City, and St. George. Check them out at robertdebry.com. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is actually available anytime at gepharddaily.com. Just click on the Todd and Aaron page. Oh, hi, I'm back. I'm <laughs> drinking water. It's a subtle beginning here. And I still can't eat breakfast. Still. Steve really is diabolical. There must be some uh, sort of plant. And look how good this looks. They do that on purpose to us. You know that. I love them so much. This All is right. horrible. Explain the guacamole. You thing. don't like guacamole. No, it's disgusting. I don't even like the fruit because it's a texture. The food. Is it a fruit or a vegetable? Yes. Anyway, it's, it's the texture. I, no, I don't like it. I'm sorry, it's true. What's the name of the restaurant that we heard? We were listed Chipotle's, was it? Chipotle's. And oh, they're fighting, they had a bad time. And they're fighting, uh, trying to get their business back together after they had some issues. And they say that uh, the, the cost of parts of their ingredients and avocados is the biggest thing that they're being challenged with for money. Interesting. Because they've gone through the roof. You know why? Because everyone, except for Aaron, likes guacamole. Well, there's a plant, and they Can call you know these places um, uh, a ripening warehouse. So a lot of food you can pick when it's still kind of green, and, and then you put it in there. And a lot of times they take out a lot of the oxygen. I don't know if you knew this, for certain fruits and vegetables. That helps? For in some cases. Um, so here it is, the perfect, the perfect avocado. It looks pretty. It just tastes disgusting. If you want to know if they're ripe or not, you push where the stem is. And if you peel that off and it's brown underneath, it's not. It, it passed. You don't want that one. The tragic death of a vegetable. How much do you think a case of those costs? And this is for, um, this is for. Because you need a fair amount to make guacamole, right? Right, but but to a grocery store, a grocery store would pay how much for a case of? Uh, 
Well, I mean, I can't imagine. Fifty dollars. No way. Fifty bucks. There's steaks that don't cost that much per case. Yeah, the case is like you know about like that, and they bought $50? those. Fifty dollars. Yeah. So these three gentlemen said, "Wow, these things are going like hotcakes," and uh, they said, "Well, we work at the plant and have a pickup truck." So they started taking cases and selling are you them serious? on the avocado black market. <laughs> There's an avocado black market. You know, they made one. And so what they did is they went around to restaurants. There is now. They went around to restaurants and they made deals with everybody. And uh, they made sure that uh, they delivered the avocados so no one came to the factory in the warehouse where that they were. That was smart, were. yeah. And they just kept doing this and they're selling them for like 20 or $30 a case. That is so epically sleazy. So 20 or $30 a case. Well, when they had to have been caught because, I mean, you can't have that much reduction in inventory before someone in the warehouse goes, dude, Unless they never go in because there's no oxygen, but they at some point they're going they to go, thought, there's no avocados. They thought they didn't catch them quickly because the, the avocado market is booming. So it was like, making money hand over fist. How many cases do we have? I don't know. Sell it. And they finally did catch them. And so they, uh, they, they tallied up an amount that they figured they had stolen. Yeah. $300,000. You are lying to me. You just committed a felony? For avocados, a felony. And you know what's worse, guys? Now you get to go to prison, and everybody else there in your cell block will be having like razor blades sticking out of their tongue and stuff, and they're gonna go, what are you in here for? Murder, what are you in here for? I set fire to 27 people. What are you in here for? We are selling avocados in the black avocado market. They're so good to beat, you, you've got a beat down coming that's just not even funny. The, the guac Dude, patrol. You are like the lowest of the low now they, on the prison rungs. They, I mean, that's just they, sad. They caught them. Three, $300,000. Wow. That's a lot of, psst, hey, bud, you want to buy some avocados? I know. They must have great door-to-door -door service, but wow. You know, there's this new thing that I really like doing, and I can't explain it, and I know it's probably it's wrong. It's your instant karma. That's why you it like is. it. It's your fondness for instant Take karma. Take it to North Carolina where all this stuff happens. Homeowner was sitting there sleeping, and all of a sudden he heard someone kick his front door in. That's scary. And a 28-year-old uh, John Alexander Bracken uh, entered his home, uh, and uh, they got into a, a wee bit of a scuffle. Now, here's my favorite part, and I know it's wrong, but here's this mugshot. Oh, my gosh, that's epic. Look at that face. So he is. I totally won that ep that struggle, man. No, I know I look like I did. I, I no, won. Obviously, that's the bad guy. Oh, that's so sad. And the homeowner was unharmed. <laughs> wow, did you pick a? You picked the wrong door to kick down, buddy. <laughs> and I know, I know that's not. I know that's not right to do. No, it's an instant karma thing. I'm sorry. Every but time I see one of those, it's like, yeah, that's right. It's, I think that's epic. I'm sorry, it's instant karma. It just picked the wrong guy. What's next? I'm, I'm out of my thing. Here. Well, I actually sort of got educated to this the other day because one of my girlfriends called me crying and she's at a new work position. Okay. And she's like, okay, I cannot quit. Right. I need the job. So I need to figure out how to do this. Okay. It's toxic people. And I think so what do you mean toxic us, people? We've all had toxic people in our life. Maybe they're one of your, your frenemies or someone you work with or... God forbid, in your family, because there's a lot of those. But there's five things they do. Oh, this is the rundown? And the nice thing about this is that they will make you feel insane. Their best ability is to make you think that this is your fault, you did it wrong, and you're just crazy if you think there's anything wrong so with So if you tell us one of these things, can I give you an example if I can think of one? Precisely. Okay. No, number one, toxic people never take responsibility. I didn't do that. That wasn't my job. No one told me that I had to be done. Yeah. It was lightning. They said, do not get in a war of the words. It's not It's not going to work. Okay. It's not going to help you. They right. said, just separate it and then deal with it if it's something that you're forced to deal with. Number okay. two. Two. They're manipulative. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to bend you to their will. Their, their entire job is to get you to do what they want you to do. Okay. It's all about them. So basically, their job is to use other people to accomplish whatever their goal happens to be. This sounds exhausting to be toxic. You know what, though? This is, and they're, they're not going to care about what you wish for. That's not their problem. Number three. They never apologize. Or the best thing I've done, and I actually had, you had to train me out of this, is they go, I'm sorry, but if you hadn't been blah, 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 which, of course, immediately, instantly erases any apology. So you, you can't apologize and then excuse it. I am sorry. 
period. Let nothing. Me, nothing so, else follows that. And you know, the whole point that they're thinking is why should I apologize when it's not my fault? Because they will twist the truth somehow between them and whoever else they can. So that, why would it, it's not my fault. Number four. They're judgmental. No, they're not. Mm -hmm. You know, we all get something wrong sometimes, all of us, we do. But toxic people will never, ever let you forget anything you ever did wrong. <laughs> do you remember that one time you did, oh, did you forget to put that on today? Oh, yeah, you didn't bring that one thing that you were supposed oh, to. Geez. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, Again. that's too bad. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I mean, that's, that's what they master. And then number four, five, excuse me, is they will defend, they will make you defend yourself. You will have to defend yourself to them, meaning that you're always in a position where, like for instance, you have to choose between them and something else. Like if they go, hey, I want you to go out to drinks with me on Friday, and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, it's my daughter's dance recital. Well, you know, we never get to do anything anymore, and that's really, you know, you, there's such a thing as being a helicopter parent, and, I really, and you actually have to like defend going to your daughter's dance recital over having a beer. Right. But their masters are putting you in the position where you have to defend yourself if you don't do what it they takes, want you to do. It takes too much energy to have those people around you. But they're there. So, I mean, if those five things ring a bell with you, then it's, it's worth thinking about. And one of the things that they say, that the psychologists who, who did the study say is, the best thing you can do is not engage. Because they're going to start provoking you. They're going to try to make this work. If you have to work with them, don't engage. Don't get into the fights. Don't get into the name calling or the responsibility. Just get your stuff done. If this is a family member or a frenemy, once again, don't engage. I have an example for this, and I told Aaron this a long time ago. It's like changing these people, changing the toxic people. This is like being in court, and you are have been victimized by someone, and they've taken all your money, or they've done whatever, and then right in the middle of court, they stand up and they go, My gosh, you're right. I'm a horrible person. I'm a douche canoe. It will never happen. It will never happen. So it, I just don't, I don't have time for people like that. It, it, once you see the science, it just makes it a lot easier because then you don't start feeling like you're crazy or it's your fault because that's their best gift. All right. But this really is somehow your fault. Time to relive the tragedy of our drone. It's so painful, though. It, uh, the drone was out. The Bill was doing his garden se segment. The, the drone is up flying around, looking great. And, uh, well, something happens, but... We're Todd and Aaron. This is the morning stream on GetPartDaily.com. Oh, the humanity.